And with that, I'd like to introduce my dear, dear friend, a brother, a true brother, Gilad Atzman. Thank you so much for coming to the program. It's so fitting to have you on the very first program, and uh, I just really can't thank you enough. Now, if there was anyone to discuss these issues with, it really is you. And what I'd like to start with is control of language. Obviously, there's one word, the J word in particular, which we find as soon as you use that word, automatically you're going to reap the wrath of uh, an entire segment of the human population which has the resources to literally destroy careers. And yet, there have been people who have courageously stood up and spoken the truth in this regard, you being one of them. I'd like for you to tell us about your experience in speaking frankly and the empowerment of the control of language, how this affects us, how it prevents proper debate. Yeah, I think that uh, it is very clear I'll be very, I'll try to be as very precise, uh, sorry, I'll try to be as precise about it as I can. Um, Israel defines itself as a Jewish state. It commits crimes in the name of the Jewish people, whether the Jewish people like it or not. Um, it decorates its tanks and airplanes with Jewish symbols, and yet, we are not allowed to scrutinize, to try to understand, to try to grasp who are the Jews, what is Judaism, what is Jewishness, what are the relationship between Jews, Judaism, Jewishness, and Zionism, for instance. And interestingly enough, the people who actually walk 24-7 trying to stop us from doing it, are not the Zionists. They are just part of it. It is actually the so-called Jewish left, the progressive uh, Jewish lobby, the Jews within the Palestinian Solidarity Movement, people like um, Jewish Voice for Peace, uh, Max Blumenthal, uh, Real News uh, guy, uh, Paul Jay, Mondo Wise to a certain extent, Mondo Wise that is actually now a leading uh, outlet uh, on issues to do with Palestine, uh, changed their uh, comment policy and actually uh, they declared that they don't allow any discussion on Jewish culture, Jewish identity and so on and so on. Now, this leads us to the notion of Jewish power. What is Jewish power? I came to realize that Jewish power is the capacity to stop us from talking about Jewish power. <laughs> this is what it is. And this is something that uh, is facilitated mainly by the so-called good Jews. Now, in my work, I'm very careful to differentiate or to start to understand the J word, what it means. I differentiate between Jews, the people, which I never talk about. Judaism, the religion, there's some a very troubling aspect in uh, Judaism, but there are quite a few troubling aspects in many other religions. Mm. And as a matter of fact, we have to remember that uh, rabbinical Jews have never been involved in any in pre in, in, in pre Israel uh, pre Zionist era in a in a genocidal or kind of a collective uh, crime against uh, anyone so Judaism can easily get off the hook well, this however is, this is but Jewishness Jewishness Jewish ideology Jewish culture this attempt to dominate the discourse to plant uh, I would use the, uh, the, the, the Orwellian uh, um, language to plant um, Emmanuel Goldsteins all around us mm. and to impose newspeak on us, tell us what we are allowed to talk and what we are not allowed to talk. This is definitely um, part of uh, Jewish culture. Sorry. And this really, this really explains, doesn't it, uh, ever since the creation of the Jewish state uh, in 1948, for decades, literally, there has been no possibility to discuss this issue in any kind of accurate way. Because once again, as soon as you even open your mouth and utter the word Jewish, when, ref when referring to the Jewish state of Israel, which is a great irony in itself, is it not? We're yeah. talking about a state of Israel which self-defines itself as the Jewish state. The Jewish state that allows uh, Jewish people from around the world at any point to come back 
to the land of Israel and to the land of Palestine. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And yet, this is this is the kind of language uh, confines that we've had for many decades. And I think this explains a lot about the suffering of the Palestinian people. We haven't yeah. even been able to discuss this in, a, in an open and honest way. It is even more interesting when you think about it because within Israel, you can discuss those issues, I would say still, openly, relatively. Isn't that ironic? You know, this is, this is, this is, this is true. You know, I, um, a few years ago, I had a, a very, um, an extended uh, interview with me in Arbetz and I, basically said everything. However, I wouldn't be able to say the same things in The Guardian, mm -hmm. because The Guardian is not the guardian of the truth, is the guardian of the, of the discourse, or uh, if to be more precise, the guardian of Jewish power and Jewish interests. And this is extremely, extremely concerning, and it is very concerning for Jewish people as well should be concerning. Well, this, and that's that's another irony, and, and the the irony of life is is just dripping all around us, quite frankly. Because I put my myself, I have no animosity towards any group of people. In fact, I, I hold people individually responsible for what they do. But of course, I also have the perspective that we, as people who come from various nations, have to take responsibility for the actions of our nations. I, my greatest scorn is without doubt for my birth nation of the United States, and I hold the American people responsible for the actions of that government, because ultimately no one else could possibly change the course of the American government's policies except for the American people. And it's all too easy for us to sit down and say, oh, well, I didn't vote for that party, or oh, you know, they're corrupt, the government's corrupt. Well, they're corrupt because you allow them to be so. And in the case of the state of Israel, the Jewish state of Israel, there is clearly a huge amount of effect that the Jewish people around the world could have on this, on this nation. But they're not, overwhelmingly, sadly. And while there are growing numbers of Jews around the world who are becoming increasingly discontented with the policies of Israel for very obvious reasons, it still enjoys enormous support from Jewish it people is, around the world. You are totally right here, but it is a very, very complicated topic. You see, in Britain, in America, we are complicit uh, in the crimes committed by Tony Blair in Iraq or, or George Bush and so on and so on and so on. But the situation of the Jews around the world is more complicated. Similarly, the vast majority of Israel, uh, Israelis, 94% of Israelis, uh, um, supported the, uh, the genocidal tactics used by the, by the Israeli do you think, army. And do you think if that happened again today, if we had another caste led, do you think that they would enjoy, the state of Israel would enjoy the same level of support today? Do you think that's changed um, at all? It is very possible, and as you probably know, it is very easy to manipulate uh, people to support uh, a governmental criminal act. So, so, so the fact that uh, people support it or oppose it is uh, very interesting. What I uh, really uh, found out in my research is that the problem is not Jews per se. I started to ask myself, who are the people who identify themselves as Jews? So obviously the first category that comes to mind is the, the people who regard themselves as Jews because they follow the Torah, they follow Judaism. This is in itself could be an innocent category. The second category are people who regard themselves as Jews because they have Jewish ancestry. They have a Jewish mother or Jewish father or whatever, they're somehow connected. Obviously, the fact that you have a fa Jewish father doesn't make you into a criminal. The third category is slightly more problematic. The third category is those people who see themselves primarily as Jews. Chaim Weizmann uh, allegedly said uh, in the early uh, 20th century that there are no French Jews, American Jews, Russian Jews, but Jews who live in Russia, Jews who live in France, Jews who live in England, and so on and so on. And, isn't, and this is a, a really interesting point, isn't it? Because if, of many things that, that you can say about the Jewish people, it is actually quite admirable how, in general, the Jewish people stick together. They actually have a very strong community, a tribal... This is, this is, this is exactly where, where I'm, 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 I'm adding now. So, Zionism is definitely people who see themselves primarily as Jews. 
Interestingly enough, the, anti the Jewish anti-Zionists also see themselves, in many cases, primarily as Jews. They operate in Jews-only cells, like JVP, Jewish Voice for Peace, International Jews, uh, Jewish anti-Zionists, Jews for Peace, Jews for Dead. Just quickly on this point, because yeah. I feel it's so important. Is this the cleverness and the deception of the so-called anti-Zionist Jews, in that while they're against supposedly the state of Israel, in truth, they do identify themselves as Jews first and foremost. And how can you do that and also object to the Jewish state of Israel? They do support the Jewish state of Israel. They don't necessarily support the policies, or at least not publicly. Is this, is this a really clever deception? Is it a self-deception? Is, is it an overt uh, you know, public to tell deception? You the truth, to tell you the truth, I think that it's laziness. I think, I think that they didn't think it through and one of the reasons uh, that uh, they invested, their leaders invested so much energy to silence me is because I exposed those issues. I argue that if the, the anti-Zionism is a, a battle for justice and a universal battle for justice, you cannot operate or, or, or move it forward fighting with zeal a racially centric Jew, Jews only uh, political environment. It should, it is actually, Jews are much more offended when a Jew starts to say, I don't want to say it as a Jew. I don't want mm -hmm. to say it as a um, diaspora Jew. I want to talk as a human being. This is where the tribe is falling apart. This is the true meaning of assimilation. Mm. Now, this is exactly the thing that Jewish Zionists and anti-Zionists try to prevent. They say, oh, you don't have to go away, you stay with us, we will fight together as Jews. <laughs> In other words, I argue that every person who identify politically as a Jew is a potential danger, whether it is pro-Zionist or anti-Zionist. But, but, but I think that this is a really important point to uh, make clear on this, because I know you as a person, and, and I respect you deeply, and I think we're very, very much the same in that we, we want what's best for everyone. We really do. So while it's, it's, it's the same, it doesn't matter if it's Jewish or if it's a, a neo-Nazi. If you identify with one group and put that group above all others, if you do that, whatever form it takes, it's, yeah. against, it's against any kind of humanist value, universalist values. And if you combine that kind of mentality, which could very well be called supremacism, if you believe that's your group is. is more important or better than other groups, yeah. that form of supremacism in itself is offensive. But when you combine that kind of supremacism with power and it politics, becomes, in politics it becomes extremely problematic, especially in the nuclear age. And this, for me, is my problem with this situation, and that yeah. fact, but we can't talk about it. And this is why, this is why I don't talk about Jews the people or Judaism. I talk about the supremacist, chauvinist, and in most cases, racist ideology that is found at the core of the Jewish tribal identity. And this is the issue, mm. and this is the, the, the topic that they really try to prevent us from talking about. Do you, do you think there's a way for Jewish people, and all other people for that matter, because I also believe that people should be proud of who they are. I think, for instance, Definitely. black people, black people in America were constantly uh, belittled and, and, and offended and, and just, just violated to the point where it took a person like Malcolm X to help bring them back up and to be proud of who you are. Don't be ashamed of who you are. So I think that there's nothing wrong with that, including for white people, for all people. Yep. There's no reason why you, you shouldn't take pride in who you are. But is there a way for us to be proud of who we are, wherever we come from, and also be good human beings that can share this planet in a way that's sustainable, that's just, and respectful of others? Can this, the Jewish people do this? This is the most important question. I'm not against tribalism. I'm not against patriotism. I'm not against nationalism. I actually support the, the Palestinian patriotism, the na Palestinian nationalism. I, all, I would also support Jewish patriotism and Israeli patriotism. But patriotism and tribalism and chauvinism become very dangerous when it is celebrated on the expense of someone else. And mm. this is the most simple 
principle. For instance, Zionism is celebrated clearly on the expense of the Palestinians. But anti-Zionism, um, as, as it happens to be, you know, um, imposing uh, their hegemony on us, and we can talk about it later if you want. I can show each term in that kind of in the that stands as a term, terminological pillar of our understanding of the conflict in in the Middle East is imposed on us by anti Jewish anti Zionist. Each uh, such a strategy is actually celebrated on the expense of ourselves as free spiritual human beings. Well, that, that's a perfect segue into our next segment. And, and on that note, I definitely want to get back into the manipulation of language and the notions of Jewish power. And as per usual, a conversation with my dear, dear friend, Gilad Atzman, is stimulating as always. And we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 